Okay, I'm back here with the Craftsman 42 inch deck we've been rebuilding. Um, the parts finally came in. I have both new spindles, complete with the nuts, bolts, everything you need. Mounting hardware that all snapped off. I've got the rings, the support rings for underneath that are have been repainted. The deck shell has been repainted. And I think we're ready to do some reassembly. Alright, first I gotta figure out how we get there's several holes, several different patterns in this thing. This one must be to fit a lot of different machines. That'll line up three holes. That'll line up four holes. I think that's how it goes. Okay, so I'm gonna try to keep that clock the right way. Figure out if this went from the top or the bottom. That would have been put in from the bottom. Okay. So we've got to reach to get the. Let me try to line this up here. That's not right. That looks right. get all these started a little bit and then some of these are going to have to come back out because there's a blade belt guard that goes up top and I have to uh, put that the bolts same bolts hold that on What am I doing? Threads in a lot better that way too. All those are just just started the bolts again because I got to get both of those belt guides out on the top figured out where they go. Okay, so this side the pulley and you don't want to put your your sheave or your pulley on yet because you're not going to be able to get at these bolts with that in your way.
Let me try to get you out of the sun here. I don't want to get a glare going. Now, uh, luckily, when I ordered these complete spindle assemblies, they came with this spacer, which is designed to get that up to the exact height that you need for this tractor. Because um, I was missing one of these, as a matter of fact. And these came with, uh, must be a hollow shaft. Um, guess I better tighten that a little bit before I use it. Came with the grease zerk there, so uh, I'll fill these up with grease before I run it. Um, these bearings have grease in them, but this is just a way to add more. Again, the reason I'm doing the sheaves, the inside hole was uh, kind of hogged out. It's splined, I guess you'd call it. And, you know, the new ones, you can see they're nice and crisp. So, shouldn't have any trouble with them spinning on there. These, it probably doesn't matter which side is up. They don't have any offset on the hub. But I'm just going to put the riveted side down, the, the three rivet side down, just probably that's how it's supposed to go, plus it just looks nice. Pull this brake out of the way. If I can. And I can. spinning all the way through to the bottom. So I'm going to have to hold that with something. Okay, I got what will be the left side one on. I did have to mount the blade for a second to prevent that spindle from uh, turning. Even with the uh, mini impact on there, it, it wouldn't just give it a quick turn and tighten that up for me. So. Uh, See if I have any better luck with the next one. I think I'm going to have to put the blade on this one too, which is which is fine. I got the spacer on there. And I'm just noticing this bearing is not seated all the way down where it's supposed to be. That's going to be a problem. I'm going to have to hit that back into its housing because the way they shipped it to me, it is standing out about three quarters of the way. I'm glad I noticed it now. What you want to do is get something that contacts the outer rim of this. You don't want to hit from the inside rim because that's going to make the bearings take the brunt of your force. I don't think it'll take a lot of force. I think it just works. Yeah, it, just, it was just falling out, but I couldn't get the uh, thing back onto the splines there a second ago.
now let's use our space here like we're supposed to pull the brake out of the way and now it fits on the spline like it should don't know if I should but I'm going to put a little anti-seize on here just in case but probably if I replace these ever I'm going to be replacing the whole thing anyway, but it just makes disassembly easier. Let's see if this one will zip on by itself. If not, I'll hold it, hold it on the blade like the other one. And you guys just missed probably all of that. And that one went on without having to hold the blade. Make sure it runs true. It does. Looks good. I'm going to leave it at that. Now I'm going to mount the blades onto the spindles. And while I was mounting this one up, I noticed that these offshore made spindles aren't the best and the reason I say that is because they don't work if we put this blade on here let me see which side's toward the grass on this one for some reason they've got it sharpened on both ends which is hilarious We put this on here and then we put our washer that it came with and the bolt that it came with. We have, don't know how well that shows up with the camera frame rate and whatever, we have nothing getting clamped here. So I'm going to have to uh, figure out what we're going to have to do with bushings and so on um, because either this blade is much thinner than the one that originally came or whatever, but the distance when you tighten that down, there's that's not going to work for five minutes. I try to see that is standing proud of the blade so I guess worst case scenario is I've got to just grind that flush with the blade but it's, you shouldn't have to do that I don't know why we have to have a do-it-yourself kit here okay I'm going back so the originals didn't have just a flat washer which this one actually I was able to carve out by tightening. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> what is that made out of? Um, here's, the, here's the interesting thing. This is concave. It'll go around that and put the force onto the, just the blade. So even though they're a little rusty, I'm going with the originals. I'll bet you these will cinch right up. Yep. And that works just fine because it goes it, it's it's cupped. It goes around and puts the force on the blade instead of I have no idea what I mean are you kidding me? What is this made out of anyway? It's not even aluminum it's I know what it is. It's Chineseium. You know where I heard that. Go ahead put the comment down below. Alright so we'll do the same thing on this side. And this little washer that it came with, that's like cast iron or something. It's its beefy. These are just aftermarket blades I'm putting on here. Um, I've never really seen anything wrong with them. That 
looks nice and tight. Now just for reference to see if you've got any bends in your deck, anything bent, what I'm going to do is line up the edges of the blades with each other and just see just see if we're off a lot or a little actually it does look like this one's up a little bit let's see if when I turn it the other side is the same it's up just a little so this one might be sitting just a little crooked or let's see how this one goes down a little bit down a little bit so my guess is this blade on this side which would be the left side of the tractor let me back out of this this blade is sitting up a little bit so what I could do is shim this to get that to get that perfect um, I'm up just about a quarter inch up about an eighth so actually this is not exactly flat either the blade itself uh, yeah this blade is actually a little bit cattywampus its own self um, I'm going to take these, now then I have to take the pulley back off the sheaf. Let me see, what, let me think about what I'm going to do. Okay, so what I found out is, yeah, this, this blade is sitting a little bit this way. So if I take some shims, put them between the deck, put them in there, in between the deck, and that I'll jack that thing out maybe just enough with one washer each uh, but that means I have to take the take it back apart but that's fine I'll just do that all right I've got a couple of flat washers I had to take the uh, shiv off the top there I'm gonna see if I can sneak them back these are pretty thin ones so I'm gonna try two and see if that's too much or too just right or what There's one. Oh, yeah, they all fall out. See if I can wiggle those back in there. Yes, I can. Uh, the top one, of course, I forgot to put the uh, belt guard. I think I got it. Let me tighten that up. Let's check the edges for clearance. Now let's see how the end of the blade wants to line up over here. Yeah, and we're we're dead on. Actually, this is a little shaky right now because I don't have the uh, sheave holding the other bearing in place. There we go. The bearing's back in. Now let's look at it. Yeah, we're dead on.
Now, the gap. Insert swear word there. Um, yeah, now the gap is lined up exactly flat. Fine. Now I'll just put, put it, the sheath back on and tighten everything back up. Now I'm just going to tighten up both of those grease circs because they, they just set them in there. They didn't even tighten them at all. Alright. Alright, so we got the deck reassembled pretty much how it needed to go. Now the last thing I want to do, the last part I got, so we got the new uh, spindles in, sheaves, some people call those mandrels, I don't know why, they're spindles. Um, the last piece I got is this, which I didn't realize even belonged in the deck, um, but I was able to, it's called a baffle, vortex. Um, so the, the screw hole that I had previously welded shut um, actually was for a carriage bolt. And um, these ones have the bar in the way now, so I really don't know if I can get a bolt and nut in those. Um, but it just about lines up, so wherever wherever the holes don't line up or whatever, or the, like the one that I already uh, filled up the weld there, I will just re-weld it, because um, I'm never going to have to take that off. So I will weld it in place. It just I think it just kind of helps the deck glide along the ground a little bit. As, best I can figure and it would have strengthened it up but I already got the steel bar in there so um, guess it's kind of redundant now but I already bought the piece so I'm gonna put it on and uh, one of the viewers who's a friend of mine uh, really likes when I use a uh, adjustable wrench to bend metal um, apparently it really bothers him so uh, eat your heart out Steve here we go Oh man, that's going to get them. That's just, I just had to move that out of the way actually to, to get this drop down a little farther. It wasn't all for naught. Okay, yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to weld the far one right here. Weld that one. If I can get a bolt in there, I'm going to use one. And then uh, this one, probably weld it too. Okay, so I'm going to have to do a little grinding to get this to drop down where it should be then I can uh, weld it in because this is a, this has got a little bit of ramp right here I don't know if you can see that in the camera it ramps up a little and then it goes flat so to really get it where the ramp is on the outside of the deck I'm gonna actually have to grind that a little bit back okay so rather than grinding this part I just kinda took this on a flat surface kinda hammered some of that um, curve out of it the curve down from here just kind of hammered it flat did the same with this one now I've just got to make sure this is sitting down flush when I when I get it welded but uh, I'm gonna start by welding it here because that's the good location because there's a bolt hole here that's you know all original and then um, everything else has been kind of welded up and reconfigured so I'm gonna start right here Weld number one.
I just went through the hole, both holes, filled the hole all the way in. So let me get the uh, next one set up and I'll bring you back. All right, so I got this other one set up on the other side now. I'm going to the far, far end just so I could get it aligned where it needs to be. I lined up this line here and let this be the ramp like it's supposed to be. Do the next one over here. I'm just going to use the existing holes they got. That'll be plenty. There's a pretty good gap in between the bottom part and the top, but I'll just fill it with weld. and I burned a hole right through it. Maybe I'll go on a little bit less heat. Put it on low, see what I can get. This one, the hole's a little bit in no man's land, so uh, I'm just going to weld it along the edge here. Should be fine. And 
going to turn the heat back up for this one so I can weld into that pretty good. And just because I got that little tab right there, I'm going to give that a little buzz too while I'm at it. Let me get my gloves back on. Alright, just got to let everything cool down, then I'll flip it over and start feeding the belt onto the sheaves. Alright, let's see if I can use this diagram that I took off earlier and maybe feed these belts back in there. And that one couldn't be simpler. Um, generally the flat, the back side of the belt goes against these type of idler pulleys. I'm going to see if I can glue this back on just, just for a good reference. I think they had it up there somewhere. I'm going to try to put it back there. Contact cement? I don't know. We'll try it. Sounds a little light duty. But all this had was sticker glue on it, so I guess it will hold. Guess maybe I shouldn't have put that belt on just yet. It's kind of in the way. That's alright. wonder how many years I've had this ball. promising. Now because these new sheaves are just bare metal, it's not galvanized, it's not anything, it's not CAD plated, um, looks a little light duty so I'm just going to give it some paint where the water might sit up here, um, probably not going to worry about the rest.
I'm just going to put a little fluid film on the moving parts. This stuff does attract dirt, so you don't want to overdo it, but, you know, the spring, just keep it from rusting inside and out. And the parts that move, give them a little, just so the rust doesn't get in there. Yes, I know. Sealed bearing. It'll get in there. Give it time. And grease up the spindles. How much do you give it? I don't know. I don't see any coming out yet. I just ran out of grease. All that and then more. That's your answer. All right. Let's give her. Got a new tube of grease here. Let's see if I can get it to prime up. Oh yeah. I imagine I'll feel some resistance once it actually gets full, but I want to fill that entire, there it goes. I hear some popping. I see grease coming out the bottom. Now we're good. Man, that's taking a lot of grease. Not coming up the bottom. Are you serious? Oh, I've terribly over greased it. There was grease coming out that side. Why didn't you guys tell me? Waste. All right, there it is deck rebuilt new spindles sheaves bearings blades belt everything ready to put back on the machine ready to remount okay got the craftsman deck put back on after being rebuilt let's see if everything is working how it should Turn on my battery booster.
like the Craftsman's going to work just fine. Looks like it's slowing out a little bit of my uh, extra oil on the bottom of the uh, on the bottom side there, if you can see that on the rod. Slung out a little bit of my extra oil, but uh, other than that, we got everything hooked up. All the pulleys sound quiet. Now we'll just work on the plastic shrouding on the front. It's awful boogered up. I don't know if that's supposed to be inside or outside or if it's just cracked off. Uh, we'll look at that next. Also, these headlights are dirty on the inside and, and they're cracked out from wherever the whenever the accident was. We'll see if we can get that to pop off and clean them inside and maybe put that back in. Try to get that trim back how it's supposed to be. That's what we'll work on next.